Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. So, if any of you saw last week's video, you would have seen me demonstrating my new homemade uh, match fishing seat box. Um, but today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how I made it, in quite some detail actually. Now, if you didn't see uh, last week's video, um, I gave you a full demonstration of the features and benefits of the box to include all the storage and the drawers and so on. So my suggestion would be have a look at that before you see this video and I will put a, a link in the description box down below and there'll probably be a pop-up somewhere on the top of the screen so you can click on that and have a watch of it first of all. That way you're going to know exactly what it is you're expecting me to build. So I should point out right at the start that uh, I'm not a professional I've got no training whatsoever in woodwork, got no training whatsoever in metalwork. So everything I've learned is what I've gained from making these similar boxes to this, although uh, obviously somewhat more primitive over the years. My existing seat box, uh, again, if you watch my videos, you'll notice that that's got a similar arrangement. It has top storage space. It has drawers at the back in the same way. Um, what it didn't have is a foot plate which is what I've now added on and also these legs are quite a lot thicker. These are 25 millimeter legs. The old ones were those octopus legs which were only 16 millimeter. What it means is now if you want to build something like this you can actually go ahead and uh, buy all sorts of accessories straight off the shelf and they'll fit. Personally I'm going to make all of mine but today, this is all about me showing you how to build my new match fishing seat box. So here's my drawing then. And if I just point out that uh, this is the top front cross member, top rear cross member, and the side members. Now obviously this drawing only has partial um, information because I didn't need to, to duplicate it and I've also got this is the foot plate and this is the foot plate cross member so if you look down here then I've written it on here for you top front cross member top rear cross member left lower cross member right lower cross member and the foot, foot plate foot plate cross member sorry that's a bit of a mouthful um, I've also done the six outer legs here and the six inner legs. I've also taken the opportunity to cut out these two. These are the joining supports which join the front and rear cross members together. We've now got to make up the, the base frame and I'm going to get this 16 millimeter tube and I've got to cut a 16 millimeter hole through the end of this uh, cross beam and right way through the other side so that it fits through like so and then we can fix it in place. I've set this piece of wood up so that it's 98 millimeters from the center point of the drill. The drill is four millimeters and the reason for that is simply that on my step drill the first step is at four millimeters so that's going to fit in quite neatly. And I'm going to drill a four millimeter hole all the way down through at the bottom, same on the other end and the same on the, the rear cross member. So now I've put the step drill back in, I can start drilling the 16mm holes through the, the cross beams. There we are, that's that one done. So that's all four sets of holes drilled now on both cross members. Now it's just a question of cleaning up that uh, swarf on the inside. And then we see if we can insert the joining piece here. Now you may well find at this point that that's quite a tight fit and you don't want to be forcing that in. Don't take a hammer to it because it'll just score it all up and it'll be almost impossible to go through. So just take it back to the step drill once you've cleaned up the inside there and just just woggle it around gently with the step drill moving. You hold it firmly and then gently just move it around. And that's your base frame sorted out. So I've disassembled the main frame again and now we're going to drill the holes for the legs. 
I've set the uh, drill press up in exactly the same way as I did before. So the only difference this time then is that this piece of wood is set up to be 28 millimeters from the center point of the drill to the edge. And all that does, it gives me my 15 millimeters and takes me to the center of these two lines here where I'm gonna drill the hole. If you're using a step drill, at this point you may well find that you can't get it all the way down to the 25 millimeters. So all you do, make sure you don't get any swarf in behind, but place a piece of wood in between. Now before I do that, I am going to just give this another brush because you need to make sure that everything is accurate and you don't want this swarf pushing your piece out of the way. So put that in, then put that on. Loosely hold that and the drill will centre itself back up again. Clamp down. The holes drilled in the cross members now and I've tidied them all up. And as you can see, accuracy wise it came out pretty well. Um, the leg hole is right between the lines here and, oh it's on this side sorry. The through beam hole is also correctly to the edge of that line there. Same of course on the other side. There is the final operation we have to carry out on the drill press before assembly and that is to drill some 5.5 millimeter holes where I put these X's. They're on the back faces of the front and rear cross beams and I've just put the X's in there so I don't inadvertently put them in the wrong way. So I've set the drill press up again. The distance from the center to the piece of wood is back to the 28 millimeters and we're at the half distance point on the top face here and I'm just going to drill these 5.5 millimeter holes for the uh, fixings that are going to hold the legs on. This next part of the operation is to drill 4 millimeter holes at 15 millimeters in and 25 millimeters in and I'll be doing that again on the drill press and that'll be in order to take a plate, which will be what fixes the leg into that hole. So with all three holes drilled on all four corners, we can now take a piece of 35 millimeter long by three millimeter by 20 millimeter wide aluminium. Just put it in behind. And what we're going to do is drill the four millimeter holes through and fix that to this cross member uh, with rivets. The centre hole will be re-drilled at 5.5 millimetres and that will actually take a grub screw which is what will hold the leg on. It's a good idea to put it in the vise, it keeps it nice and steady and then this can't move either. So just drill the 4 millimetre holes. Then take a, a rivet, 4 millimetre diameter rivet, put it in and just shoot it in. And the plate is actually now nice and neatly inserted. Only thing to do now is to take a 5.5 millimeter hole through there. And now all we have to do is tap that hole using a six millimeter bolt. Now for anyone that's not aware of this, if you take a 6mm bolt and try and put it through a 5mm hole, it's going to cut its own thread. It will in aluminium anyway, don't try this with steel. Uh, you can do this with a, a spanner or a wrench. I tend to use a nut driver. Very, very gently, just put it in, keep it straight. And then I'll just put it on a slower speed. Nice and slow, all the way through. A little bit of downward pressure, not too much. You'll feel when it's free, allow it to go through, speed up, and that's it. And then take it out. And that's it threaded. I don't need my leg to be adjustable constantly. Once it's in position, it's staying there. So I'm going to use one of these little 6mm uh, grub screws. They may be called something different in your area. But basically, I've inserted one into the threaded area, which we've just done. I take a leg, put that through, just lock it through. There we go. 
just nip it. You don't have to be tight. That's it. So then that's all that's going to be on there. That's how it's going to stay. And that's going to look a lot better than having one of these knobs sticking out, which I'm not going to use. So I'll need to do the same for the other three corners. So that's all four of the leg brackets attached. And as you can see from this one, it's pretty neat. It's not going to be perfect. As I said at the outset, this isn't uh, going to be a, a sort of a manufactured thing on a professional basis. It's done in my garage. So anyway, I've taken the opportunity to uh, fit the legs, uh, fit the, the joining pieces. Everything is just loose fitted at the moment. So what I've got to do now is to drill the holes down through the uh, main cross members and through the joining pieces and then put bolts through them to hold all of that together. Now I've set the drill press up so we're centered on this top face. I've also put this piece of wood out at 98 millimeters again. So I'm going to be drilling a 5.5 millimeter hole straight down through, through the main cross member, through the joining piece and out the other side. Do that for all four corners and then we can get on with the bolting. I've put the frame in a vise and now I'm going to put the, the bolt through in exactly the same way as you saw me do previously. Nice and straight, just keep steady pressure, there we go, nice and slow, go through all of the layers, nice and gently, allow it to cut its own hole, you'll feel different resi resistances as you go. When this thing gets to the end it will lock, I just allow it to go through slowly until I feel We've actually got to the end because of the resistance against the screwdriver. And that's it. Do the same for the other three and then we just cut off the bolts. I've cut these two pieces of uh, right angle aluminium. Um, this is just a, a thin version. It's um, 25 by 25 by 1.6 millimetres. And it's just been cut to fit inside between the two cross members. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see that this doesn't actually come flush with the top, which is where I need it to be. It has to be sitting up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put rivets through the side to make it come so it's flush. But to do that, I'm going to turn it over and put the rivets in from here. And that's the top frame complete. As you can see, these sit flush with the top, and that's where the, the wooden top box goes eventually. So that's the top section complete. Now we have to start work on the lower frame. So in other words, we're looking at this section here. Obviously, it isn't mentioned on this side because there's no point in repeating it. But if you remember, I've already cut these two lower cross members. And basically, we're going to put holes in them, one inch holes, front and rear, and that's where the legs are going to pass through. So I'll go over and do that on the drill press now. It's exactly the same as I showed you previously, so there shouldn't be any difficulties whatsoever for you. So that's the rear 25mm hole done. I've got the same 15mm of material here, exactly the same as before, but now we have to drill the front hole. Now I could just measure it, uh, but that, even if it's a millimetre or so out, could cause problems. So what I'm going to do, exactly as I've done on that one there, if I lift the frame up, push it through, make sure that's all the way through. Now, as you can see, by putting that in, I've determined exactly where this hole is going to be. So all I'm going to do is draw a circle inside the existing hole. Just put it in, draw your line. So there's our circle. I'll just use a square and mark along the edges like so and then I'll measure to make sure I've got 25 millimeters and that's absolutely great so half of 25 is 12.5 so that's there and Therefore, my drilling point is exactly there. So 
So, now for the moment of truth. I've set it up on the back in the same way as I showed you a moment ago. And I've now just aligned these holes. So if I've got this right, that will hopefully go in perfectly. And we have success directly through and through and absolutely spot on. So the only thing to do now is to finish the other one. I've just taken the opportunity to drill the holes in the outsides of these lower rails to take these two part threaded inserts. Now I had these made up some years ago. Um, there are six millimeter thread inside and a 10 millimeter thread outside. And what you do is put them in and just do the nut up and tighten with the spanner. Now that of course makes it really easy for me because that's it, job done. And of course, all that's going to happen is, is that the outer leg will go in. There'll be a knob that goes through there. There'll be a hole in this outer leg. And then I'll be screwing that knob in to hold the inner leg in place so it can slide up and down. Now, as I say, that's pretty much it done for me. Uh, obviously, I've still got to do something similar to what we did on the top rail with regard to just holding this in place. But I'll come back to that shortly. The problem for you guys is you probably don't have these two part inserts. Now I have found a place online, a manufacturer of fishing tackle boxes that does sell these um, as separate items. So I'll put a link to that site on the um, description box down below. I do notice, right, I couldn't find anything to talk about these half nuts, these 10 millimeter half nuts, but you can get those from RS online. And again, uh, I'll put a link in it for you if you need to. Um, if you don't do this, you might want to consider using the uh, 10 millimeter rib nuts, which we've used in previous uh, jobs. Um, and I'm gonna assume that you're probably gonna do that. So in a moment, I'm just gonna go through and show you how I'm gonna achieve that if I were to do it with those rib nuts. Assuming this section here, this piece of scrap, simulates this back section here, the two back legs, I've drilled the hole for the, um, the main legs here. I've also drilled a seven and a half millimeter hole all the way through. And then I've widened the outside hole to nine millimeters. So I'm gonna take a riv nut, put it in to that hole like so. And now we've got to use a tool to get this to, to crimp down hard. And that's where your outside knob's going to go. Now, previously, um, this hole at the back had to be 12 millimetres, as you can see from this diagram. On this occasion, I've actually drilled it at 7.5 millimetres, because what we're going to do, instead of using the 6 millimetre grub screws that we had on the top ones, we're going to use an 8 millimetre grub screw. So if you want to make this work and make a neat job of it, these are the tools you're going to need. A bolt, which goes all the way through the piece and out through the back of the riv nut. A standard six millimeter nut. This started life as a hex coupler, just like this, six millimeter hex coupler. I've drilled out the threads so it slides easily up and down on the shaft of this six millimeter bolt. And just a normal washer. Put the bolt through and attach it to the, the nut. Just screw it in a little, like so. Give yourself about 10 or 15 millimetres of thread showing and then put on the hex coupler. A bit more thread and then at this point I actually attach the spanner and I do it through the main leg hole here like so and then on goes the washer. Do the thread up some more until you can push it into the riv nut. Make sure the bolt comes out through the front of the riv nut and then just tighten down on the nut here. Once you've made contact, take your spanner or in my case nut spinner, just push forward to make sure that this riv nut is seated firmly against the back of the piece and then just tighten It'll take a few turns because obviously you're not getting much 
by way of turns on it as you're doing this through the hole. Keep turning, you'll feel it tighten up. And you'll also see under here that this is actually starting to deform now. You'll know when it's right because this bulge will be completely like a tire all the way around the, the piece, as you can see there. So then it's just a question of unhitching everything, loosen that off. Once you've got that loose, you can then just withdraw everything and that's it. So the final operation now then is to take your piece and this back plate and fit it inside in exactly the same way as before. You'll use the same two rivets either side of it and then you'll be drilling a hole through this one all the way through the back plate itself. And that's the only difference. You'll be drilling that hole through at 7.5 millimeters. It's exactly the same as I said before about when you did these ones here. The only difference is the size of the grub screw. Now before I start to build the foot plate, I'm going to actually put the legs together and then fit them to the, the main frame. That way everything's, is, everything's as it will be when I come to make the, the foot plate. So hopefully it'll stop me making any silly mistakes. I've made up one of the legs already and you already know that I cut the inner leg here when I started the, the video. Uh, but obviously I've also cut these right angle pieces here which form the supports and then it's just a question of bolting through. Now the actual material I used is the stuff they use for those uh, nylon cutting boards and you can buy it dirt cheap in the various uh, shops. I'm just using this one to put the pieces on at the moment. Um, but really my box is grey so this is the remains of the same size one but in grey. And all I did, I cut my feet at about 95 millimeters square because that's how many I can get out of one of those uh, chopping boards. Assembly wise it's actually very simple. I've taken the two right angled supports and just fitted loosely these uh, 20 millimeter pieces of square tube. 20 millimeter of course being the <laughs> diameter of the leg so that just gives me the setup to put onto the foot itself. All you need to do now is just roughly position the supports on the pad. Make sure it's uh, pretty much equidistant all the way around and then just take a pen and mark it. Move those and now we can just drill those holes with a six millimeter drill bit. I've drilled a six millimeter hole in the base of the leg and now all we do is we take the support, pass a six millimeter bolt through, through the leg itself. These bolts are obviously a little bit long for this so I'm going to have to cut it off but it's all had available for this sort of thing so I'm just going to use it. Put the other support on the other side, take a spring washer and I'm going to use these nylon locking nuts. Um, they are pretty good on their own, but what I'm finding is that uh, when the, the pad moves around, sometimes they can, um, over a period of time, come a little bit loose. So now we've got the support brackets in place, we can fit it to the base plate here. I'm going to put these spacers back in because they do have a tendency just to move in and out a little, and this will keep them absolutely parallel. I'm just going to fit another 6mm bolt with a washer. Put it through, another washer on the far side and then I'm going to use another one of these nylon locking nuts to tighten it up. So that's all the bolts fitted and I've uh, smoothed everything off and so that's another leg complete. I'll just do the other four and then we can crack on with doing the foot plate. So that's the inner legs now fitted into the outer legs on the main frame. Uh, they're just loose fitted at the moment because if I use this one here to show you these at the moment are just locking against the wall of the outer leg and I haven't drilled the hole all the way through so that they can lock off the inner leg yet because I haven't yet decided the height that I'm going to have from the base here onto the, the top of the leg. Now 
At the moment that's something like 75 millimeters from there to there, which means that the uh, foot plate's going to come out at about 75 millimeters high. But for the moment, this is fine because what it means is I can just leave them in position like that and start to build the foot plate safe in the knowledge that I've got these here. So just make sure I don't foul anything or anything else which I haven't thought of. So next thing then, let's go on with the foot plate. But first of all, what I'm going to do is just go through how far I've got. Now again, you'll see I've drilled a six millimeter hole for this bolt through here and I've actually locked it off with a nut inside so it can't turn. I've cut these um, arms for the foot plate and I've also created slots in the side there. Now you can actually do that on a router would you believe and I didn't know that either until I looked on the internet. So that's what I've done. If you haven't got a router or you don't feel like you want to because you don't feel it's safe then feel free to do it the normal way. Mark the, the lines up, drill down through and then just take a file and make it a straight line. Anyway, so a couple of washes on then. And the reason for those is so I clear these rivets. Put it on. Another washer and a normal six millimeter. This is the female version of the knob. Just put that on like that. So, as you can see, that now slides in and out like that, so when it's being stored, it'll sit like that and be done up. When I want to use it, pull it up, out, and push back. Originally, I was going to have one of these pieces of channel on there. Having said that, I've now decided to do it slightly different. And I'm just going to have this plate on the bottom like this, and another one on top here. So I create a kind of a sandwich. And that way I just have less play in the arm. I'm going to bolt them down through because I'm not quite sure how much uh, pressure I'm going to be putting on them but this way it should make a good solid connection. There is actually something I should have mentioned a few moments ago. When I was cutting those plates I've actually cut a notch in this top one here. So the forward edge is actually about 25 millimeters or behind the forward edge of the lower one. The idea being that as I put the foot plate in, I can rest it on that lower uh, plate and then it'll go in a little bit easier. Here's the uh, foot plate cross member and I've set it up in exactly the same way as I did for the, the main members in here. So all of these measurements from the edge to the leg are all going to be the same as what I did previously. So there's no point in me showing you that and obviously the same at the other end. I've also used the inserts here and the rivets uh, again as I showed you previously and these are the six millimeter ones. What I haven't shown you is I've cut these slots here and I just did that by just passing it over a few times on the table saw. And the way this one's going to work is that I made these 20 millimeter inserts with a little one millimeter sliver of uh, aluminium because they're going to go inside these slots here. I made it quite a tight fit. So now you can see we've got something to support the front foot, front flop, the foot plate cross member. <laughs> I'll get these words out eventually. I can't actually fit the cross member as yet because I've also got to fit this. This is the rear support member which goes in here and in order to fit that I've got to cut those slots in both of these sides. As you can see I've cut the two slots and I've also inserted the 20 millimeter tube and the one millimeter flat bar just to pack things out into each of them. Now I can fit the rear cross member on here but what I couldn't do before because these bolts were screwed right in is to actually slide it in. So I've withdrawn the bolts and now I can actually slide things in and be able to, to get it fitted. I've put everything back together so now I can fit the front cross member and I can also get the, the top plate on. I fitted four millimeter rivets all the way along the front and down the sides here but in addition to that 
I've uh, put some larger five millimeter diameter rivets in the end here and also underneath. I've got to do one more at this point here and one more at this point down here simply because that bar that goes through there I want it to be really really secure. And that's the foot plate just about finished. I will at some point have to work out how to do a catch to keep it in position when I'm carrying it but I'll leave that pretty much till the end. So that's it for part one of the build then folks. Next time we'll be building the the top box and all the drawers and putting everything together and of course we'll be finalizing everything to the point which you've seen now. Anyway, that's the end of part one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the button. If you want to subscribe, you can. And until the next time, bye for now.